I shall miss that when we leave Casablanca. It's gracious of you to share it with me. Good day, ma'am. Monsieur, good day. <laughs> You're a man, please. No beating about the bush. Right to the point. Why is it that most scientists believe the first living cell happened by chance, even though statistically it seems impossible? I think Richard Dawkins, the famous atheist, provides the answer in his book, The God Delusion. On page 114, he writes, The argument from improbability states that complex things could not have come about by chance, but many people define come about by chance as a synonym for come about in the absence of deliberate design. Not surprisingly, therefore, they think improbability is evidence of design. Darwinian natural selection shows how wrong this is with respect to biological improbability. Now let's stop here and let's agree for the sake of argument that Darwinian evolution is responsible for all simple life forms evolving into all complex life forms. That doesn't make Darwinism capable of addressing the issue of the first living cell. But let's keep going. Dawkins continues to write, and although Darwinism may not be directly relevant to the inanimate world, cosmology for example, we'll have to stop there now, this statement is like saying, although 2 plus 2 may not equal 5. A more accurate statement would have been, although 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 5, or in Dawkins' book, it would have been better if he wrote, although Darwinism is not directly relevant to the inanimate world. But let's continue. Dawkins finishes the statement by saying that Darwinism raises our consciousness in areas outside its original territory of biology. Now, that is a very profound statement. That is why many scientists cannot accept the implication of statistical data showing the impossibility of the first living cell happening by chance. Natural selection over billions of years is recognized as the intelligent designer that transforms simple life forms into complex life forms. This mindset affects our reasoning. When we look at the world around us, we see amazing complexity at all levels of observation. Natural selection has made such an imprint on the thinking of scientists that even when they look at the stars, they do so with an evolutionary mindset. Some scientists speak of an evolving cosmos as though there was some mechanism like natural selection to cause it to evolve. Some scientists speak of the formation of crystals or snowflakes as though somehow they relate to biology. Dawkins' statement that Darwinism raises our consciousness in areas outside its original territory of biology is true if what he means by raising our consciousness is affects our judgment. Applying biological truths to non-biological matter is illogical. So, in effect, Dawkins' statement Darwinism raises our consciousness in areas outside its original territory of biology could be restated as Darwinism affects our judgment regarding the possibility of the first living cell happening by chance. The disclaimer at the beginning of this video relates to my playing the part of a devil's advocate. My atheist friends would not accept anything less than a presentation of current scientific theory and data so I've assumed the perspective of an atheist in this video. About a year ago, I made a YouTube video called Monkeys with Typewriters. That video demonstrated with simple math the impossibility of a Shakespearean sonnet happening by chance, even with a hundred billion years and many quadrillions of trials per second. The math used in that video didn't seem right in my heart, even though in my head I couldn't deny the facts. I had to prove to myself that the math was accurate. So I bought a hundred packs of playing cards to test the math by turning over cards. It took me a week, but eventually I proved the math to my heart's satisfaction. It was a week of restless days and nights, trying to understand things that seemed probable in my heart, but were proved impossible in my head. About that time I was reading Dawkins' The God Delusion, which attempts to prove that man is deluded by the appearance of design in believing in a creator God. I acknowledge Dawkins' main point, which is that the appearance of design in nature so influences man's perspective of reality that man naturally believes in a creator God. I realize that this was the source of my problem of not being able to see in my heart what I knew to be true in my head. The God delusion 
was why I was unable to accept in my heart the math that showed the impossibility of time and trials creating a Shakespearean sonnet. But before we go any further, let's see the Monkeys with Typewriters video. Put one million monkeys with typewriters inside a spaceship that travels 10 billion years. By the end of the trip, the monkeys will have typed a Shakespearean sonnet. This monkey theorem defends the possibility of life arising by chance. Professor Gerald Schroeder did statistical analysis of the plausibility of the monkey theorem. Here are the results. Schroeder first referred to an experiment conducted by the British National Council of Arts. A computer was placed in a cage with six monkeys. After one month of hammering away at it, the monkeys produced 50 typed pages, but not a single word. Schroeder noted that this was the case even though the shortest word in the English language is one letter, an A or an I. A is a word only if there is a space on either side of it. If we take it that the keyboard has 30 characters, then the likelihood of getting a one letter word is 30 times 30 times 30, which is 27,000. The likelihood of getting a one letter word is one chance out of 27,000. Schroeder then applied the probabilities to the sonnet analogy. He asked, what's the chance of getting a Shakespearean sonnet? He reasoned that all the sonnets are the same length. They are by definition 14 lines long. He picked the one he knew the opening for, which goes, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? He counted the number of characters. There are 488 letters in that sonnet. He asked, What's the likelihood of hammering away and getting 488 letters in the exact sequence as in the sonnet, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? What you end up with is 26 multiplied by itself 488 times, or 26 to the 488th power or, in other words, in base 10, 10 to the 690th. This is where it's really interesting. The number of particles in the universe, not grains of sand, we're talking about protons, electrons, and neutrons, is 10 to the 80th. 10 to the 80th is one with 80 zeros after it. 10 to the 690th is one with 690 zeros after it. There are not enough particles in the universe to write down the trials you'd be off by a factor of 10 to the 600s. If you took the entire universe and converted it to computer chips, forget the monkeys, each weighing a millionth of a gram and had each computer chip able to spin out 488 trials at say a million times a second. If you turn the entire universe into these microcomputer chips and these chips were spinning out a million times a second, producing random letters, the number of trials you would get since the beginning of time would be 10 to the 90th trials. It would be off again by a factor of 10 to the 600th. You will never get a sonnet by chance. The universe would have to be 10 to the 600th time larger. Well, that was the Monkeys with Typewriters video. The Monkey with Typewriters theorem is used by scientists as a kind of god of the gaps. It's amazing to me that it continues to be used even to this day. The only explanation is that scientists are so blinded by the phenomenon Dawkins calls the God delusion, and what I call evolution design presumption, that they can't see the obvious fact that the monkeys with typewriters theorem is baseless. So what is evolution design presumption? Let's take a look. All human beings possess the presumption of design. If they believe in God, they would say they possess intelligent design presumption, or IDP. If they don't believe in God, they would say they possess evolution design presumption, or EDP. Since the subject of this video is the first living cell, we will from now on use the logic of EDP. EDP comes through nature and nurture. Nature gave us evolution design presumption. The most significant advantage humans have over animals is their ability to see order and create order out of disorder. The inclination to communicate and write down a language, to make music and write down a score, to build a building and write down instructions, to explore and write down a map, 
all are the result of evolution design. You cannot see the world around you without looking through the lens of EDP. EDP is to humans what water is to fish and air is to land animals. It is the way we are. When humans look at a simple problem, it is only simple because they possess evolution design presumption. Give the same simple problem to a dog and you will begin to understand how difficult the problem is for non-humans. Give the same simple problem to non-living matter and we have the subject at hand.